It's recording. So we're looking there. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. And welcome to our first <laughs> video in the Netherlands. And uh, we are trying very much to improvise with this recording, for example, because I couldn't carry my lights here and I couldn't do so much with gear. So we even have the camera on a table and we're recording at where we stay now. So, yeah. It's been uh, almost a week since we've been here, and uh, I thought that, for example, oh no, what am I doing? Where's your intro? Hi, welcome to the to, to the video to another video. Um, my name is Kwame, and this is hi, I'm Elaine. Yeah, and we make videos about our lives either in Ghana or now that we're here. Just where is here? In Netherlands, <laughs> <laughs> we are in Utrecht. Yes. Yeah, just, you know, our experiences so far, the highs and the lows, and still experiencing culture shock, actually. So we thought we'd do a quick video um, and share our experiences so far, especially also quickly enough so that we don't lose light, which goes out very quickly. So I, for one, have not been here um, before at this time of the year, as in, in October, which is like autumn. So, um, yeah, I have to first of all say that, yeah, I've enjoyed summer, the previous times, but this one I'm not a really, like, a big fan of because it's very unpredictable weather. Even in the summer it is, but this time it's just a bit dark and rainy. And yeah, it's really autumn. So, I mean, the f I don't even know how he does it in a t-shirt, but for me... <laughs> I'm wearing lots of layers, like I'm wearing stocks, I'm wearing leggings, under my pants, I'm wearing a sweater, long sleeves, small uh, vest, and I'm still like chilly. So. And Kwame is just sitting here in a t-shirt, and I, I, I think honestly there's something wrong with my body, but yeah. Because when his, his lips are very cold, but then he says he's not cold. My fingers get really cold. Um, when I take my socks off, my feet are cold, but I don't feel cold. Mm. I don't understand how that works. Me neither. Yeah. So that's one of the things. Um, plus, I think also that um, I'm f fine uh, with the weather in terms of how cold it is, because if you're used to heat all the time, this, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me, because I see other people, she's also living in Ghana, so I, don't, I think it's just me being weird. But yeah. that your body is like that? It's not, yeah, it's not feeling like I, I need to wear layers. Mm. Yeah. And what about the people? Yeah, so the people, what has, um, well, it's still about the same. <laughs> it's been three years since I last came here. The last time I was here was in 2018. And I think that was a bit better for me because I'd come the previous year and then I came in 2018. And then 2018, because I had a longer stay and a bit of my own routine, it got easier. But one thing that I realized hasn't changed is still um, life in the train. <laughs> life in the train is still very much... Um, very in my lane, in my bubble, don't talk to me. People are not even lifting their heads up from their phones. Or even if they, if they are not on their phones, they are literally looking dead into the air. And <laughs> there's no, unless they're walking together, there's no interaction with anybody else if you're an individual. It's like, don't look at my face, don't look at my eyes, don't do anything kind of thing. Mm. So, if, so if, if you're traveling in a train alone as a newbie like me, then you might as well, like um, my friend Farida said in one of her videos, she lives in New York now, that you might as well just, your earphones are, are a, a, a must, you should carry it and just close yourself in your own bubble and be there. Yeah, but I think that's also what people enjoy probably about it. About the train rides. That yeah. they can just be by themselves. So yeah. maybe that's how it became. So it's a, yeah, a bit of a, yeah, a, a double-edged um, thing. Yeah. It's either for that or it's just, yeah, people just want to be by themselves and that's okay as well. But I find it a tad um, um, okay. weird or it's a culture shock for mm -hmm. me 
because that's not exactly how public transport is back in Ghana. Yeah. In Ghana, you sit in a car or you sit in a bus with people and something breaks out in terms of like, you know, a conversation or social conversation or political conversation and boom. Yeah. Everybody's talking to everybody. So I don't know if Ghana ever <laughs> does a real system, if that's what's going to happen over time. But yeah, that's one of the things that um, I was still struggling to come to terms with. But I guess what she said is right. Maybe it's a time for people to want to be. Yeah, I, do, I don't know. Maybe also it changed a bit because of COVID. Because uh, people used, they still wear all these masks. masks yeah. And that also kind of uh, prevents you from reading the other person. So even if you're smiling, you can only see your eyes. eyes so you're yeah. not sure. Does this person want to talk or you're just friendly? And yeah. maybe that also doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Know. Yeah. That's that's right. That's that's. Yeah, well, what about sure. the people in general? How do you how do you feel after a few? It's almost a week. No, five days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think maybe because now it's not even my first time uh, or second time or whatever. It, I think it's warmer mm. now because when you walk into places or when you encounter people. Um, because you don't seem too newish, you mm. you tend to notice a bit more than just people who just want to be in their lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already know how to read some situations. Some situations and engage a bit of how mm. the people are. And with the places that I've been so far, um, especially with restaurants or like cafes, so far it's been um, very warm people. Mm. Attendants are very warm, they're very engaging. If they speak the Dutch to you and you don't speak Dutch and yeah. they switch maybe to English, they are very nice. They're asking, like, you know, some even go to the point of asking, um, when, was, when we're getting the SIM card, for example, go to the point of asking, like, where are you guys from? Oh, how is it there? And, you know, making conversation and everything whilst you're yeah. attending to us. Yeah. So, yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, I'm also surprised by the service in Netherlands because everything comes so quick yeah. and also uh, there was even a guy on Saturday I went we went for coffee or I went for coffee Kwan was there with me and then he's like he brought the coffee and then like a few minutes later he came like is everything satisfied and I just laughed yeah. because I was like yes I'm very <laughs> satisfied yeah <laughs> just because it was so genuine I'm knowing Ghana they do ask but it also feels more like something they have to do than yeah and this guy was very genuine so that was very nice and the speed yeah the speed it's, it's, <laughs> it's not like it's not like when they when when you go to a restaurant and you order something and um they they in Ghana in order to like buy time you'll be there waiting for the food after maybe 10 minutes or five minutes and then they bring the cutlery like it's almost coming just to trick your mind to think that yeah it's almost coming but here it's just they bring everything they bring everything yeah. all together and yeah so that's that's also nice um yeah my dislikes are the unpredictable weather yeah so far but um, that's also a characteristic of autumn yeah so um well maybe for every season in the netherlands it's going to rain. And this morning it was raining when we went to do groceries. When we came out, the sun was shining and there was a blue sky. Literally. And literally. We're... Like, yeah. walking to the grocery store was like five minutes. And walking inside was about another five minutes or ten minutes. And you come out and there's already blue skies and sun. And you're like... Yeah, it was really crazy. Like, can you make up your mind for like two hours or something? Yeah. Yeah, so... Um... And what about being from... Going from... Uh, majority to minority so now the I mean feeling. first you were amongst Ghanaians yeah. mostly black people now you direct this quite a white city so and there you're f surrounded by Dutch people so how is that this time um, it still feels about the same time the previous times that I had been here um, you do notice it but I'm also the kind of person who in a way likes to be in his own name Mm -hmm. so yes I do feel um, I don't feel disadvantaged I don't feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. but how do you notice it well it's just seeing everybody not looking like you all around oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I mean by you notice it that yeah you're not in your um, like country or in, in where you are a majority or like 
Mm. But it doesn't, like, if you know where you're going, if you know what you're doing, if you know your routine, it doesn't feel so far, as far as I can, like, have experience, it doesn't feel like you don't belong. Yeah. I've not gotten okay. that vibe yet. That's good. Yeah. So, that that's what I'm saying. It's that I like to be in my own lane and do my things mm. and the food is good. Yeah, I think we're also managing with the food. Yeah. Yesterday, for example, I was in Amsterdam, um, walking around a lot. Now that's one thing, <laughs> like walking and cycling and actually just being able to go to places with mapped out routes and streets. You don't, you don't feel it till you get home and you realize that, whoa, like you have like almost 30,000 steps on your, like, mm. you know, so yeah, walking is also a thing that's, uh, so walking around, yeah, it's been nice when the weather is not misbehaving. So yeah. But I do think you're not very fond of a bicycle. So if you would like the bicycle, then you would do that more and then you walk less. It's less uh, heavy. Because the yeah. walking is a lot. I'm not fond of the bicycle because of um, <laughs> the pace at which those who know how to cycle here and live here their whole lives go about it. And how they like, they're like literally almost like, you're in my way and you have to signal. And Well, you don't have to really mind them. You just do your own thing as long as you don't yeah, do you, anything you, dangerous. Yeah, for somebody who... Um, um, yeah, of course, you're not doing anything dangerous. For somebody who is aware of the road rules for example i as a driver in ghana when somebody is driving in front of me yeah so now you're the other way around it's a good experience no <laughs> don't know. i think i think we should try it more yeah so maybe i'll try cycling more maybe i don't know but yeah know. that's that's what makes me not like really you know plus yeah i feel that you are much more settled in your finding your way around when you don't have to worry about the way you are moving around as well so if mm -hmm. i'm walking and i'm lost i can stand somewhere and be like okay let me check yeah you know okay so but, this is where yeah. i pass this is where i go but in cycling it's like but then you can do the same you can stop and on the side and then check yeah, and the, then go the, again the adding another factor to it machine okay. than your own body mm. but the holiday is uh, also about trying new things mm. yeah mm. wait till. okay yeah okay it's so bicycle yeah so that's about my ooh, ooh, ooh. another culture shock thing which i'm still not used to or still getting used to is the fact that you can just open the tap yeah and just drink from it yeah, the water, I also still have to get used to that. I'm still getting used to it. I, I thought I'd, I'd just do it, but I'm still getting used to the fact that you can just pick up your glass and just and drink. Because in my head, in Ghana, I never have to do that. I don't even want to, you know, I only fetch the water into kettle, warm it for tea or something. And I have a water dispenser or you buy a bottled water or sachet water. But you just hear, nobody, nobody even wants to buy water for any reason, unless you're a tourist and you're in town. Yeah, you, just, you don't need it. You just open the tap and I'm just like, should I really be drinking this? You know, so yeah, it's, it's mental gymnastics, but so far, so good. And we're losing light. So if I start getting really, <laughs> because I don't have lights, I think we should actually just... No, I think it's good to also share. So one thing uh, that we're experiencing is in Netherlands, everybody has... A, so everybody's vaccinated or unless you don't want to. Oh, yeah. Um, but then... So we have a vaccination card from Ghana. Um, but in Netherlands, they have a QR code or actually in the whole of European yeah. Union. Yeah. Um, but it happens to be that if you're in Netherlands and you don't have a social security number like Kwame... And you cannot register for a QR code, yeah. which means that sometimes we can be turned down into restaurants and... It has happened once. Yeah. So far. So far. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's for us, it's a bit difficult to navigate because, um, I mean, you're excited to go to places and you want to go and then maybe we won't get in because of this QR code thing. You get there and they thing. can't scan your QR code because it's... 
Yeah, and yeah. some of them are just like, oh, we don't care, don't worry. But they actually can get, uh, how you say, a fine. fine for it. So some are a bit more hesitant. And I've tried to research whether it's possible to get like a temporary one or maybe, I don't know. But the only thing they do is that you can test for access. So then you, you do a test, which is for free, which is good. Yeah. But it's only valid for 24 hours. hours. So... That if, would mean that if you would, want to be going yeah. out a lot, you have to be testing every 24 hours. If you want to be super sure you get in. Yeah. Uh, so that's a bit of a hustle, but um, we are also planning to visit some other countries possibly. And there they actually have a temporary QR code. So yeah. it really differs from country to country. country yeah. And in Netherlands, this is a bit of a hole in the, in the policy or something. I don't know. Yeah. So it's a bit frustrating and... Um, luckily, a friend of us gave us a tip that you can just email uh, ahead of email time ahead of to time, find out yeah. if it's okay to come if you have a... It just makes it a bit less spontaneous because, I mean, we're on holiday. We don't really know like where we want to go in the morning. But yeah, yeah we just try to move around it and yeah, it's okay. But it's good to know that this can be a restriction if you come to the Netherlands. I hope they will fix it. Yeah. that it will be developed because I know for example in France they have the temporary one but I think the Netherlands doesn't care or I don't know they're busy with other things yeah but it's a bit frustrating yeah but in 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 Amsterdam for example um, when we got to the restaurant to go eat lunch um, I was with a friend and when the lady asked us do we have the QR code can she can scan with them my friend just said no we don't have the QR code and then she said, oh, then it's fine. You can sit outside. So it's more like to be indoors where it's enclosed. Yeah. You have to show the QR code. But if you want to sit outside and sitting outside is, you know, 50-50 chance. It's either there's sunshine or there's rain. So the convenience of sitting outside will, might force you to want to go inside. And if you want to go inside, yeah. then it's an issue But well. I have to state that it doesn't make sense, this policy, because we came into the country with this card but then I cannot enter your bar, which I think is ridiculous. Then they should have said at the entry, this is only valid for this system. For this. traveling, yeah. For traveling, but nothing like here, that. When you get here, maybe we'll do a, a, a quick test and give you a, a QR yeah. code, which is temporary for the time you'll be staying here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, even, or, if, it's a, even if it's something that's paid, maybe you just do a test. Okay, you are vaccinated and you are negative. So you get this temporary QR code, which you can be using to yeah. go around the Netherlands for the duration yeah. which you're here. I think that would be much easier yeah. for most tourists who are coming from different countries, which don't have this European system of a QR code. So, yeah. Yeah, true. And I think a lot of the, like my friends and family, they also did, weren't aware of this because they are all vaccinated. They have the QR yeah. code, so they're not like worried about it. But then we say like... Oh, this will happen and they were surprised. Yeah, they're like, oh, I thought it would be like it was a good system and that it worked. Well, yeah. it works if you fit into the boxes. But if you're yeah. not fitting into the boxes, then it doesn't work. So um, it's okay. So I'm also, I'm going to transfer mine also into a QR code. Um, but of course, when I'm with Kwame, I won't show my QR code because then they will send him away. Inside, and, yeah. then not, and then I can go in. So it's a bit of a... Yeah. A bummer. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's also part of the reality we are currently in, so we just have to adapt. Roll with it. Luckily, luckily, you can at least test for free twenty four hours, and it will be yeah. testing. But I still think it's a very ineffective way of moving around when you want to yeah. go to places spontaneously, and every time you want to go to somewhere, you have to plan it ahead and test before you can go around. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially I can get it if you're not vaccinated that you should be tested because then you can transfer it but, but if you're vaccinated you are less of a risk yeah to other so people. then it shouldn't be like that but anyway that was the covid rant yeah and i think that's about our experiences so far nothing uh, maybe you can share if there's anything you're looking forward to or any plans you have here yeah i'm looking forward to um collaborating or even making uh, short possible short films um, while I'm here of um, people that I can find, just simple social stories or artists, collaborations, just film them, make short documentaries. I'm looking forward to 
traveling. Um, that's if I mean we can find our way around to the other um, European country that we want to go to. I'm looking forward to meeting more of Elaine's friends and um, enjoying the food. Not so much the weather and and the bread <laughs> and the bread. No, no, and uh, yeah, having a good time and 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 making sure I come next time in summer. So yeah, that's uh, about the update. It's been good so far and yeah. And we're doing this from our Airbnb. Yeah. In yeah. Utrecht. Yeah. So part of holiday, the part Kwame doesn't like is that uh, we move around uh, a bit more. So we were at my, our friend's place before and then we found this Airbnb. Uh, which is really chill because we have a small garden and like enough space we can also cook ourselves. Yeah, and um, there's a table that is holding the camera. Yeah, there's a window that is giving us light. I hope that it hasn't been lost no. because then you can't even see me now. But yeah, <laughs> stop crying. You'll be fine. So it's been it's been good. Like it's also nice to be in different environments. Like do a lot on food, do a lot of walks because in Ghana you don't walk a lot, or at least I don't because it's too hot. Um, yeah, so it's been a good start of the holiday. Yeah, it's been yeah. a good start. So, um, yeah, we'll come back your way as, as, and, as and when. We have new experiences, maybe even after our travels or after a few more days when we have stuff we want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. But in between that, if we have, or we have, we have this small camera, if we go out and we can film, we'll film bits and pieces of our experiences and just share them with you. Yeah. So yeah. This if is you haven't, us. Yeah. If you haven't subscribed. Yes. Do subscribe to the channel and <laughs> like the video. And do let us know in the comments if you've ever been to Netherlands and what you thought of it. Or maybe if you've been abroad somewhere, how did you feel the first few days? Yeah. Do you have any recommendation of things we should do? Um, if there are any good food places for Ghana food, maybe at some point you would out. want to know. Yeah. And if you plan on coming to Netherlands, did we inform you well enough? Or, well, our coming yeah. videos would do that for you. So let us know in the comment section as well. And we'll catch you in the next one. Do we? Hopefully this is not too long. Do we? Say do we. Do we? Tot de volgende keer. Doei. Oh, was that one? <laughs> Till next time. I thought that was tot ziens. Tot ziens. Yeah. It's also possible. Tot ziens. Tot ziens. Yeah. Wow, we're such talkative, eh? You are. <laughs>